everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another repot with me. Except it's not. I'm essentially unpacking some plants that I got in the mail. Oh my gosh, this has been a long time coming. I don't know if you can tell actually how long they've been here, but I've had these plants in here in basically wrapped up like this at the root. And they've been in here about best part of a month. This is a new leaf here and it was kind of sticking out. So I've had to pull it out before we start. I'm essentially just going to unpack some of them and I'm going to be very, very careful. And as testament to how long they've been in here, I don't know if you can see this very well, but that is how long they've been in here. They're actually growing through the packaging and that is a strong root right there. So all we're going to be doing today is very, very, very gently cutting some of these out. I'm going to get my gloves on. I'm going to waste no time at all. And then we're going to get into some questions. Also, I thought I'd wear this shirt because I feel like I haven't pissed off enough horrible people this week. And I don't feel like I've pissed people off for a while. So I thought I'd do that. I absolutely love this t-shirt. It's awesome. Um, and I agree with everything written on it. So that's enough said about that. I've just changed out from one of my other t-shirts because I have filmed a few videos today because I'm actually going to be going away for two weeks very, very shortly. So the next few videos you're going to get from me, they've all been filmed on the same day and you'll be getting them over the next couple of weeks while I'm on holiday, which I will go into in a bit. Don't worry, we will talk about that because a lot of you have asked me about that because, oh my God, guys, there's, there's been some stuff. There has been some stuff. Now, I don't have a ton of questions. I feel like there isn't that many this week, but we'll see how we go. I'm not going to speed through these. I'm going to be honest with you. And that is because they're probably better off in here while I'm away. So I'm only going to open a few of them, select few that are maybe a little bit, you know, crowding up the place. So I'm not going to be going at any real pace. You might not see me do a whole ton. There is a reason for that. I think these plants are clearly very, very happy as they are and they're growing new leaves and it's great. And it's going to create a lot more work for me if I have a ton of these to now put in Lekka and now find a tray for them. So what I'll probably do is I will take these out, but I won't do a huge number of them. So I won't be getting through this entire tray today because that's, I don't know how many there are in here. There's got to be easily a hundred plants. There's probably more. So let's, let's not expect to get through this entire tray. You feel me? Oh, before before we start, I had, I put on my Instagram stories maybe a week to two weeks ago now, a picture of a fern that was growing in among my plants. And a few of you asked to actually see it. So I'm going to go and grab it before I start while I've got nothing on my hands. Two minutes, because honestly, I don't know how this has occurred. I've got loads of it. I'll just pick up the one. I'll pick up the biggest one. Um, it's kind of growing on its own, this one. I have no idea how this has occurred. But what I will say is, all of these are in the same tray and they are near the unit doors, the big shutters that I have. So this is what's been growing. I will bring it up to the camera. Hopefully it won't blur out. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of like lower down now because the camera is kind of tilted down so you can see the table. This is what's been growing uh, in amongst a tray of, I think it's gigas as it happens, Philodendron and gigas. Now I've had that tray of plants for so long. I've easily had those plants a year, maybe, maybe close to two years. I've had them a long ass time. You feel me? Um, and all of a sudden I've had this shit growing there. Obviously it's a fern. I don't know much more than that. It's very pretty. Um, but it shouldn't really be here. Um, so I don't know if some spores have come in in the air or I, I don't really know. I can't tell you. I can just tell you that it's nearer the door. And I do have some, some other things in here. Like I've got some, um, really rare variegated palms. So it, it could have come in off those. I, I don't really know, but this is the shit that's growing basically. And I do have a couple of them. I have maybe two or three. This is the biggest one. There's another one that's maybe half the size. And then there's just like bits and pieces in the pots. It hasn't transferred anywhere else. Seems contained. They seem really cute. And I guess, Hey, I can grow ferns this well. So that's kind of a little bit of a, um, a confidence boost for me, shall I say, because they look great and they've grown from nothing. So I'm pretty happy about it in one way because it means that my conditions are great, but it also means that there is technically contamination in here. So I will get to the bottom of that at some point. I'm assuming that's a root. It's very bizarre. But yeah, that, that's it. I think it's been in there a while. Now, it, don't get me wrong. It looks like I've deliberately planted this, but you probably can't see it. This is obviously a rotten stump of something in there. You see that at the front? It's probably not going to focus, is it? This doesn't want to today. Does it want to at all? No, I don't even know what it is focusing on. Let me try again. Please, come on. Yeah, it hates me. It, it doesn't want to focus on jack shit. But literally, there is a stump there that uh, it obviously was a plant at some given point. And that's what it's doing. It's just deciding that, you know, it's just going to grow like that. So that's the mystery fern. Since you guys said you wanted to see it, that's the mystery fern. I do have a couple... Don't know where it's come from. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with it either. I have no clue. Let's just see. Let's see what happens to it. It might end up dying from neglect, I don't know. So, I have a few things here. A lot of you guys were just asking how I was doing, and that's really kind of you. Um, and you were really emphasizing, you just wanted to know if I was okay and how I was doing. Um, so, uh, I am doing all right. <laughs> I thought I'd give you the short answer first. Um, I've, I've, had a, I've had a weird few weeks, if I'm gonna be honest with you, and I've, I've done not so all right. Um, I haven't been very active on Instagram or, or anywhere, actually, for quite a while. Now, a lot of that is busyness, um, just shop, stuff like that. Like, I mentioned this in, in another video I've filmed, but you won't see it yet. Um, you probably can't see if I move out of the way. I've got a ton of shit here. Um, this is philodendron line on my eye. I have literally behind here, you probably can't see, but behind these plants, I have six trays full of plants here. I have some more over there. I have... Trays lining the aisles in this aisle here. It happens again on that aisle and then again on another aisle and all the other trays are full minus, I guess, the anthurium that's at the top, which you can maybe see, maybe not see. There's a lot in here. Um, I'm totally full up. So apart from being busy with that anyway, um, I don't know. I just, I, I don't really know. I, I can't articulate this one. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it yet, but I've gone through a bit of a... Sorry, I'm, I'm bending down to uh, get the, the wrapping of this. A bit of a, a little bit of a mental journey, you could say, I suppose. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put this tray up here so you can actually see something I'm doing. I'm just peeling this off and it might take a while. Yeah, I guess I've gone through a little bit of a mental journey recently. I kind of, you know what, why not? I've basically realized that I've been kind of depressed for a long time and I'm not meaning to come off blase about this, but it, that, that's kind of how it was for me. W what's been happening is essentially I've been like depressed, but high functioning. So I haven't quite realized what has been up. And it wasn't until I started to pay attention to it that it got really bad because I felt like I started to like feel emotions more. And I don't, I don't want to go into this yet because I'm just not ready to really articulate it because I'm still trying to understand it. But I've gone through a bit of a, a ride recently anyway. Um, I'm absolutely fine. I think I just, I've been, I've been worn out and run down for a long time. And it, it's probably not hard to really guess that or surmise that that might be a possibility, really. Um, cause I don't stop working and, you know, this shit's hard. <laughs> but, um, I'm not ready to fully talk about it yet, but I am fine. I am really fine. Um, I've just had a bit of a, I don't even know what you could call it, guys. I don't even know what you could call it. A bit of an awakening, though. Um, so yeah, I'm fine. One of the things that helped me waken up actually was the the arrival of a hobby that I used to partake in when I was a kid. Well, it was more than a hobby to me. It was, it was everything to me. Um, I think that's kind of made me realize that I was very unhappy. Um, as soon as I introduced something back into my, not my routine, but like my life that I previously loved and do love, it took introducing that back in to make me see how unhappy that I was. And it's that that's actually revealed quite a lot recently um, about myself and how I've been feeling and stuff. But yeah, not to go into it. It's not because I'm uncomfortable. I just can't, I feel like I can't articulate my words very well. So it's not going to make sense, basically. But anyway, the hobby that I have been extremely happy to get back into, as a lot of you may know, is horse riding. And I got so many questions, so many questions about horse riding itself. I could probably do a whole video on it. A lot of people were just saying like, oh, tell us about horse riding. Like, what do you do? Um, are you back into it? Are you taking lessons? Just, just what's the tea, essentially? So best way to start, very briefly, um, when I was a child, when I was very, very young, I grew up on a riding school, kind of part-time. So I rode horses a lot. Um, I went to pony clubs. I used to I did a little bit of jumping, but I've never been much of a jumper. Um, I did dressage, just all, all of that, all of the things. Um, and then I hit my teenage years and, you know, you get your friends, you get your GCSEs, you know, exams, whatever have you, high school and all of that kind of had to stop. I also massively um, became estranged from my extended family that essentially ran that school. Uh, yeah, that was fun. So basically I stopped horse riding. Um, I loved it. I didn't fall out of love with it. I just, I couldn't. I had too much on. Um, the place where I grew up, I should mention, would be maybe like an hour's drive from where I was going to school, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that's probably an hour driving at night without traffic. It was, it was quite far away and I, I 
you know, I, I couldn't really be there anymore for many reasons. Um, so basically, I stopped horse riding for years. And I don't know what it is recently that made me want to do it again. I don't really know how I fell into that. I guess because I lived mainly in Manchester and I spent all my time in Manchester before I started doing this for a job, right? Like you, you couldn't get access to horses because it's in the city, right? There's, there's nothing there. You can't. But it's not since working more over here, I've realized just how um, available that is to me. So I've started doing it very recently. And I tell you what, <laughs> it's like ignited some special spark that I had when I was a kid for it. And I've never been more in love with anything. And I get, I honestly, I get nothing but joy out of it. I'm so excited. Um, so more on that. I've not only have I been doing lessons, but I've been trying to learn about not just horses, but the equestrian sport and, and a, a lot of things you could say. I'm watching a lot of videos. I'm trying to get a lot of awareness of, of the sport because there's a lot of debate as to whether it's, you know, cruel or it's this or it's that, or, you know, certain practices that should and shouldn't be used and, and all of this. Now, I realize if you're not into horse riding, you're probably going to find this quite dull. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But I'm going to talk about it anyway, because I got so many questions asking me about horse riding. I think it warrants a little bit of a bigger topic. So um, apologies if you're not into horses and you don't want to hear any of this. But I'm going to tell you anyway, because it's one of the few things that makes me happy and I would love to talk about it. So I began to basically learn to ride or to find somewhere to learn to ride around here. And I went to a riding school, kind of local to here, and I had a lesson. And I, I really enjoyed the lesson. I didn't realize how bad I was. Um, and I found that quite frustrating to basically not be as good as what I was as a kid. Like things are so much harder to learn when you're an adult. So my balance was all off. Um, it just it, terrible, no strength, really bad posture. Just the worst, the worst thing you've ever seen. But I had a lesson and I liked it. It was the first place I found, first place that could fit me in. I went, I had a lesson, all good, all great. Um, I found the instructor to be really good. She was a little bit more vocal, a little bit more like, I'm going to say barky. Um, but I kind of liked that because that's kind of how I was taught as a child, right? So it felt very homely to me. Um, I then went to a different place a f maybe a couple of weeks later and that's because I had a lesson at this this first place I had a lesson at and after that she didn't really have any more slots available it was very very difficult to pin this riding school down for an appointment it was very chaotic to say the least and I struggled a little bit getting an appointment so I was like right okay I need to find somewhere else and maybe I can juggle the two riding schools now I wouldn't necessarily recommend that but because I've ridden before I kind of know what's what. I just need to be kind of retaught and get my balance back and everything else, right? I'm not totally new to riding at all. So I found another school and then I went there. And oh, let me tell you guys, I had an awakening that I'm ashamed to say that I didn't have before. What am I talking about? So previously, um, the way I've learned to ride horses and, oh, there's some rot here. Sorry, I'm, I'm concentrating because I've found some rot actually. That's not so good. I wasn't expecting that. That's not so good. Has the other one got rot? No, the other one's fine. Okay. Not so good. Um, the way that I learned as a child and the way that this, this riding school had taught me was to, if you're not, if you're not an equestrian, you might not know what I'm talking about, but ride with the leg and basically kick your horse on if you want it to move forward. Basically. Um, I went to this second riding school. And believe me when I tell you that I did not know that this could be done this way because I learned as a child and then I stopped. Um, I never watched any horse riding anywhere. I learned the same way. And I did not know, I, I swear to you blind, I did not know that you could ride a horse without nudging it with your heel, right? I did not know that at all. And I went to the second riding school and they didn't. They taught that if you want your horse to move forward, you sit on the horse and you essentially squeeze it with your legs. It doesn't hurt. It's just, you know, it's like someone just doing that to your waist. It's a gentle nudge to go go forward um, rather than a kick. Um, and I thought, oh, wow, okay. Well, why didn't I know this? I didn't even know this was possible. And I was very, very intrigued by that. Now, I did want to try, I think I already had a lesson booked at another riding school um, somewhere else. So it was the third school I went to. I went again. I went a week later to a different riding school. So I've gone to two schools by this point. I went to the third school and I, I didn't really like the style there at all. Um, that school wanted me to ride 
more in the rein um, of the horse, which I do not like because it can pull on the horse's mouth and it's not kind. So I didn't like that one anyway. They also practiced kicking the horse in order to encourage movement. And by this point, I now know that you don't need to do that. So really it was a unanimous, unanimous decision that I would pick the second riding school I went to. And I think that riding school teaches you in a way that is very um, ethical and very what all equestrians would, would hope to know that people ride their horses like. So they teach riding like that by a simple squeeze. That's, this is the riding school I've chosen. And you have a riding crop with you, but you don't use it. It's, uh, and I was taught that as well. Your riding crop is your last resort. So that's been really awesome. So I'm very, very happy to, to be able to do that. It's awesome. And I'm, I feel like I'm learning to ride again in a slightly different way. And it's a way that I wish I knew existed. And it sounds so silly probably to a lot of equestrians out there because um, you probably think about how could you not know that? I just didn't. I didn't ride past a certain age and then I, I've never been around anyone else that's ridden horses. So I just didn't know. But I'm thrilled to be able to learn the most gentle way possible of riding a horse. Um, I have been looking into horses more as well. I've been to some horse shows. I'm going to one in, when, when this video airs, it'll be the next day. I will be at a horse show in the UK and I'm so excited for it. Um, but I, I'm getting into horses more and I'm trying to learn more about them, i.e. Um, the effects of a bit on a horse and stuff like that. I'm really wanting to learn all I can because eventually, probably no surprises here if I tell you that eventually I would like to have my own horse. That is so long off though. It's basically going to have to be me being an excellent rider. I want to know exactly like most aspect of horses, even the things that I don't necessarily need to know um, that, you know, something like a, a farrier would handle or something like that, or something like a saddlesmith would handle. I still want to know these things um, anyway, because I'm that kind of person. Oh my God, there's so much raw on this. Are you seeing this by the way? Yeah, this is the reality of an import. This is what I told you about, sorry, interlude. I've mentioned this before in videos. Plants can rot when the roots get too dry and then they get saturated again. This happens on the roots all the time and it's happening now. I don't know how well you can see it, but trust me when I say this is rotting because look at all these stringy roots. I'm not going to cut them. I'm going to leave them. Um, I'll cut them later, but that's, it's not a good sign that for other things to come. I've got new roots growing out, so I'm reasonably happy that they're, they're going to be okay but that's really shit. So yeah, I've been learning to ride again. I had a lesson about two days ago and I felt like finally after about four or five lessons, it started to finally click again and it it's kind of coming back. And there was those moments where I was kind of how I was when I was younger and it was back. And I'm really, really happy about that. But yeah, I'm just basically absorbing anything horsey at the minute um, and I'm really enjoying myself. And I, I wish I'd done this a long time ago. I wish I'd done this a long time ago because a lot of people ask me for these repop with me's um, you know, what are your hobbies? What do you like doing? And you know something? I've never bothered answering the question because I didn't have any. And that's, that's God's honest truth. I didn't have any hobbies. I just didn't. I might have, um, back in the day, I, I would read a little bit. Um, but I, I didn't literally, guys, didn't have any hobbies because I was working that much. And if I wasn't doing something on the shop, I was doing something on the channel. So a lot of my absence has been trying to find myself offline. And I think that's been a big, big help. And I'm happy to talk about it more when I'm able to articulate myself a little bit better. But horse riding has been a, a fantastic, fantastic catalyst to really realizing the rut I was in. Um, and I'm starting to come out of that rut now, slowly but surely. And I'm very, very happy about it. So thank you to everyone that was asking me, A, how I was, and B, asking me about my horse riding. Um, oh my God, it's a real privilege to sit and ride a horse and I'm, I'm loving every second of it um, and I'm pleased I can finally afford it because my god horse riding is not cheap so ugh, I've went and picked one of the most expensive hobbies you could probably have but I'm still loving it um to those that asked me what I do or what I will do in terms of like eventing and stuff I would like to read into a little bit more about competing with horses because I don't know the effects of that on them. And I really want to think about that a lot. I don't think I would ever compete professionally. I would maybe go to a few clubs and try my hand at show jumping or something, maybe later down the line. I don't really know. I could definitely do some dressage. I think I would prefer to do that anyway. I think that's quite cool to learn. So I can see myself taking like professional dressage lessons, but I'm not so sure about jumping or, or other stuff. I need to think about it. I want to know a lot more about that 
kind of thing, I think, at the minute. So we'll see. I will learn to jump again because I did do some jumping when I was a kid. Um, I'll learn to jump again once I've kind of nailed everything else. Then I will do a little bit of jumping. I'll go out, buy a back protector, start jumping. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But I just want you to know how much I'm loving life since I found that again. It's like I finally found something. And I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way. But it's like I finally found something that I can enjoy offline that is mine. And it's sacred. And it's not plants. And it's not this. And it's not that. Do you know what I mean? It's something that is completely untouched by shit. Does that make any sense? I know that's probably coming off really harsh, but I, I can't really articulate it any other way. It's just something that's just mine. And it's something that I can love and enjoy and and, and kind of like flourish enjoying. And I, I couldn't be happy about that. And I don't want to change that. So you might not catch me talking about it too much. You might see the odd picture or the odd video of me riding or something like that, but you're not going to really hear too much about it. I'm happy to talk about it intermittently. But it's not something I'm ever really going to put online, I don't think. Um, like obviously, if I went to like a show or something, I might put that online because that's awesome. Um, and that's not me doing it. But generally speaking, this might be something I just keep for me because I feel like the internet's had enough of me. Do you know what I mean? I, you, you get enough. Um, I would really like to keep this one quite sacred um, and stuff like that. Like if I ever got a horse in like... Oh, I don't know. We're talking easily two years, right? Easily. And that's doing lessons every week and getting really good and, and doing whatever and finding a property. Um, I don't think you're going to see any of it. I think that's something that I want to keep for me that's special, really, really special. Um, I just don't, I don't want anything to come along and fuck with it. And this is meant to be negative. It's just my genuine thoughts. Um, I don't want. Like the plants thing, right? I love plants, obviously. Still going, still grafting every day. But, uh, you know, a lot's happened and a lot's taken the shine out of it a little bit for me. And now it is a bit more of a job. It's not that I don't love it. Of course I do. Or I would just stop. But it's not what it was and it never will be. Now, some of that is because I have a shop. Some of that is because of... I don't know, just YouTube, you know, everyone has an opinion, all that sort of stuff. That too, of seeing how the community's had a bit of a downturn as well. It all has a little bit of an impact. So for just for once, I want something that people just can't have. And I'm really excited about that. So I'm excited to have found something that absolutely genuinely makes my heart whole again and do it off camera. So I'm happy to talk about it, obviously, here and there. But I, I don't think you'll find me really featuring it a lot because of that reason. Because I just, I just want something for me. And I'm really excited about that. Like... Really, really excited about that. So let's get to another question. I'm going to have juice all over my phone. Uh, why have I had a missed call? I don't want a missed call. I can't do anything about the missed call. I don't know who you are. So that's cool. Amazon. All right, it was Amazon. We're all good at Amazon. I don't even know what I ordered from Amazon. Do I know what I ordered from Amazon? I don't think I do. Um, okay, so I did have uh, a question written down. This is kind of like an old plan for a reticulata update, my alocasia reticulata, but you will be seeing it. You will have seen it very recently and you'll see it again in a week or so. So I needn't do that. Right, going to the Aroid show and holidays. This was a big one. Um, those of you that watch my second channel may have heard me periodically um, talk about the fact I'm going on holiday. And I might have mentioned Miami, then Mexico, or Mexico, or something. Um, so that's not happening anymore. So I'll tell you what I was going to be doing. I was going to be going to the Aroid show. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn because I'm not the people organizing it or anything else. But I can't imagine it's going to run uh, this year. I think if it does, it's not going to be the same. Again, you can throw away everything I'm saying because I'm not the person that's organizing it. So... Oh, shucks. My video stopped recording and I didn't see it. So I actually don't know how far I was through that. But basically, I'll recap very quickly. I had a holiday planned to go to Miami and then Mexico. And because of COVID, I cannot go. Um, so I will be going to Morocco for two weeks for a holiday. I say holiday. It will be work-based as well. I'm going to do some plans for videos and just stuff like that while I'm there. So I will be taking a laptop to work. But I, I promise you, I will still have a holiday. Get a nice, get a nice tan. Although I have kind of got a tan, you probably can't tell. I have a little bit of a pre-tan before I go, because I find that if I do that, I don't really burn when I'm out there, and it's just generally a, an easier life. So I've got a bit of a pre-tan going on. I don't know how obvious it is. 
it's kind of it's kind of good. Um, trust me, I'm normally very pale, so this is me being very tanned. It's not fake tan. Um, so I'll be doing that, and I am looking forward to that. It is just a shame about the the Aroid show because obviously America won't let us in, so I can't go to that. But stay tuned for next year. I'll try and head out there then. But yeah, I'm pleased I at least get a holiday because famously last year, obviously. I didn't have one and I honestly, I still don't think I've fully recovered from last year. That took everything out of me. Um, I don't really feel like I've had a break since then. I know I took a couple of weeks off last Christmas, um, but it, it didn't really do much. I need like a good month. So I, I'll see what happens. I might pre-record some videos for January and take January off. Uh, you won't necessarily know because content will still come out, but I'm, I might do that because I really could do with a rest. And to be honest, this shop could do with a lot of TLC as well, because things were overgrown here. They're not getting propagated enough, etc., etc. It's a bit of a problem. So I'm, I might do that. We'll see. But I am really, oof, sorry, the hair on my face. I am really, really looking forward to a holiday for sure. So next question, expectations versus reality of owning a plant shop. Now I like this. So the the number one thing I find, and I don't I don't think we need to spend too long on this because I feel like I feel like I might have said a lot of this before. I'm not really sure, but the thing that gets me is that people think that owning a plant shop is like super glamorous, and I think there is an important distinction here to be made between, quite honestly, guys, these kind of plants or common plants. Now you're probably thinking, what? What do you mean? Basically, a lot of common plants are sold locally. They are sometimes grown locally, or if they're grown elsewhere, they're imported in huge bulk and they're stored, they can be stored in warehouses because they're that hardy. That's why they're common, because they've stood the test of time and they sell more because they live and everything else. Um, you've got those that you can ship in soil and they don't really do anything. You can keep them on shelves for a little bit of time in a shop and not have a light on them. You'll know what I mean. You'll have seen it a million times um, and they're fine and they look great. And that's not a problem. And then you've got these guys. Um, this is considerably less glamorous, I would say, than doing a more regular plant shop. So in a regular plant shop, my understanding, I don't know at all, don't get me wrong. I've seen a few regular plant shops. Um, but you know, you get your stuff imported, like for example, a shop here in the UK, a regular plant shop gets all their stuff usually from Belgium or, or um, Holland in some description. And they get their plants from there. They're already in soil. They're already potted up. They're good to go. You get them in trays of maybe six to eight. You pay for that tray, whatever else. You get them brought over and then you sell them individually. And that's what happens. There's no acclimation. There's no growing them on. There's no preparing. Sorry, there isn't. <laughs> I'm going to get hate for saying that, but if there isn't. Um, at least not in contrast to this shit. Um, and I'm not trying to, to um, belittle that, by the way. I'm just, I'm trying to prove that there is a major difference and there is a reason why I'm going to say what I'm going to say in a minute. So stick with me. But there isn't really any prep. You get them in, you put them on the shelves in the shop, you put them wherever you're going to put them and that's it. That is it. So when you get big box stores, they do the same thing as a lot of, I've got, I've got moss all over me, as a lot of regular plant shops. They do the same thing. That's how it works. You get them in, they don't really take a dive. They've not undergone rigorous you know, processes on the roots or anything like that. They haven't had to be shipped in moss. None of that is applicable and they do okay. And I think that if you want to view it as being glamorous, that is quite glamorous because there isn't, there isn't much of an ugly side, I don't think really, because I've also gone to the Netherlands. I've also brought plants back like that. So I, I do know how it is. I have done it. And you could say it's reasonably glamorous. There's not a lot of loss. It's, it's all fine. It's not a problem. This shit, however, is the least glamorous thing. <laughs> and I, I understand why people might think it is glamorous because you see, you know, your favorite plant shop's website and you see all these plants looking really bougie or whatever and they, they look great. You know, they're all like, ooh, in a pond. It's like these big price tags. It's like, oh my God, this is so glamorous. It's fucking not. Let me show you the reality, which is where we are right now. This is obviously, this is a really good import, as you can probably tell. Plus my conditions, um, Admittedly, I've tweaked them to get minimal loss on bringing these plants in because I'm very good at it now. I've done this a lot. So I kind of know how to not get plants to go really nasty, especially anthurium. Obviously, it still happens. But generally, I've, I've got quite good at it. But this shit is not glamorous. Literally, I'm pulling off rot. I'm pulling off, 
nasty old bits of rotten stuff. I've got yellow leaves here. I've got something that I wouldn't deem that to be very sellable, although it's healthy, because it doesn't look sexy. And a lot of shops behind the scenes will have a lot of this shit go on. That I guarantee they'll have worse imports than this. Um, because I certainly did when I was less um, experienced in the past. I had terrible imports and I, I've got better at it. Um, but it's not glamorous at all. And I think people literally go off, you know, the Instagram videos of the shop, panning around all the shelves with all the stuff on it. And it's like, I shit you not, every single seller alive um, that trades in this sort of stuff will have a back room or a portion of whatever off camera of the stuff that is so dead and stumpy and ugly that they won't put on those videos. I will freely admit to doing that too. I think for the tour of this place, the big one I did this, this year, um, I had some stuff. Admittedly, don't get me wrong, it's huge, some of the stuff. There's like palms over there. I've got some tree ferns. I've got some giant gigas. I've got some um, quite gangly monstera small form that's like a bit variegated, a bit not. I've got loads of stuff. It's a similar stuff if you've ever seen that section here that I'm pointing to on the back wall. It's more of that, basically. Um, I shifted that outside to film it. And I think most of the plants in here actually look okay. They, they, don't get me wrong, I've got some horrors. And you will see them, don't worry. I hear you. I hear your demands for shit plants and you will get them. Oh, you will get them. I'll do it in, uh, in October for Halloween, but you, you will get them. Trust me. Um, but you'll also get to see the living wall because it's not looking very good at the minute. But um, I, I guarantee you guys, I swear to you, every shop has a section of shit they ain't putting out. And it's... I understand why we all do it because obviously I've done it too. And the thing is about plant shops, it's the same thing for YouTubers as well. This goes for YouTubers. YouTubers will have the same thing. Some YouTubers are very transparent about what they've got that isn't growing well. Um, some are, some aren't. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it necessarily if you want. I'm not knocking somebody if they want to have like perfect shelves and they take off the stumps or whatever else. I'm not knocking that. I'm really not. You do you. Um, obviously, I've done it for tours. I'm not about to have a go at anybody. But the thing is, as far as shops are concerned, you feel like, I mean, yeah, YouTubers as well, actually. So as far as shops and YouTubers are concerned, in some sense, more so with a shop, it depends on what kind of YouTuber you are and how you think. But in a lot of sense, um, a shop would hide the bad stock, we'll call it, or the bad imports, because they feel that it would impact negatively on their brand, right? And I, I totally get that. And that is one of the reasons why I didn't show certain bits. Like if I had bits of, I don't know, scissor lift, it, it isn't. I'm using it as an example because it's actually still over there and it's still broke, by the way. Um, but just like bits of scissor lift, bits of DIY tools from building the unit. Um, I actually have a dehumidifier in the corner, if anybody remembers that. Just bits of stuff like that I, I moved from the unit because it wasn't aesthetic. It, I mean, that can't really impact on your brand. But if, you know, if you've just got some stuff in that, that is an import and it, it does look terrible, you don't necessarily want to put it on camera. And that it's not to lie to anybody. It's, it's for me, for my sake, it's more, I don't know if people are going to understand that imports look bad before they look good because you do get a lot of people nowadays that still think that if you buy one of these in the post, it's going to look great when it gets to you. And don't get me wrong, it, it can and they do, but it's not guaranteed. You feel me? Um, and as we know with social media, there's a massive pressure for everything to look absolutely fucking unbelievable all the time. Um, and it, it's not reality and it does go for shops as well. So that's definitely a uh, part of the whole like expectations versus reality thing as far as plan shops go. Um, definitely. And people see you know, these huge price tags on, for example, this is another one on a shop's website. And I'm not just talking about mine, I'm talking about anybody that deals in this kind of stuff that has a higher price tag. So a common plant shop, you might be going between somewhere between five and $25 pounds, whatever for a plant. Whereas in this line of work, you're more high double digits. So like 70, 80, all the way up to potentially a thousand or more for a plant. And People see these price tags and they do think, oh, wow, yeah, it's bougie, therefore it's glamorous. And the flip side of it, what people don't think about is, I have some oblique down there, right? I'm not going to grab them. You've seen them. It's fine. Um, I have some oblique down there. Now, sometimes they ship brilliantly, sometimes they don't. And people see price tags of, say, on the website or whatever, of an oblique that's sold. And they're like, oh, my God, you know. And it's like, 
But the flip side is that package, like every other package, can of course get delayed in customs. It can get lost by the courier. It can be kicked. It can be cooked. Um, anything, you name it, it can happen, right? Um, that has to be refunded. Not glam. It hurts, by the way. Um, doing a thousand pound refund is not the most fun thing you'll ever do, let me tell you. It is part of the job. It's absolutely how I like to work and how I treat my customer base and it's how it will always be. But it does suck and it's not glamorous. And I tell you something, the, all the plants that go wrong in the post, I tell you now, they're always the special ones every single fucking time, whether it's um, someone that's made like a special order or it's a plant that's been on hold for someone for ages or um, it's a really expensive one or it's one that we have one of or it's, it's I don't know what it would be like. It happens with a bleaker. It happens with, um, it hasn't happened with the UPI yet, I don't think. Oh no, it did once. It happened with the Spiritus when I sold a section of that. That was a fucking nightmare, both for us and the buyer. It was an awful week. I think it got stuck in a box for a week. Uh, what else has it happened with? A Linamii. I had to refund a Linamii that went out. That was a, a large price tag um, because it, it got, I think it got stuck in customs. I can't fully remember. Um, shit like that happens and People don't think of the flip side. And it, I tell you what, it happens more. Let me tell you, it happens more with the expensive stuff for some reason than it does with the cheap stuff. It's ridiculous. That's not very glamorous. Um, I, I just think that people think the plants aren't work. And I mean, I know a lot of you guys know if you have, just by having a lot of plants, yes, they are work. Um, it's just one of those things where things just aren't as they appear. This isn't a glamorous job. Most of the time I'm up to my ears in bits of nodes, wet lecker, my nails are dropping off, I'm sick of looking at the same plant, by the time I've done this tray, I don't like crystallinum anymore, I get quite bored of them, um, or you get a plant in that you've personally spent a lot of money on, um, maybe it's something variegated and it doesn't, um, you know, the variegation doesn't persist and you paid like £4,000 for this thing, it's happened, um, or... I don't know, just, just, I can't think of any random examples. I'm trying to look at my wall going, what's, what's fucked up for me in here? Um, just, just loads of shit. The perils of you guys buying online, if you think about that, if you buy buying cuttings off Facebook or whatever and it goes badly wrong for you, we have the same perils. We have the same perils in terms of plants not making it. We have new problems with like fucking hell, plants being destroyed at customs despite having phyto. That's happened to me a lot. I've told you guys about stuff like that. Um, Loads of shit happens. Some of it's the same shit, some of it is different shit, but there's so much more at stake than what it can be for you at home because you at home can get a refund. We can't. Like if we, our supplier sends something, you know, I buy 50 of these and they all rot. That's not my supplier's fault. I'm not even going to tell the supplier that it went wrong. I don't contact my suppliers and say that to them. If my shit comes and it's, it's fucked, that's it. That's it. You take it. Um, and I've, a lot of people, I think, start plant shops, and I've said this before, so I'm not going to like draw it on, but a lot of people start plant shops and they don't know it works that way because they've started a plant shop from being very inspired by either YouTubers or seeing plant shops or whatever, and they, they still think like a customer, and that's totally understandable, obviously, but until you do it yourself, you realize it just fucking don't work that way, and you can have a box of plants that you've put your entire funds for your business into. It's happened. It happened in the old days. It doesn't happen so much now. Um, I have backup funds, obviously. But you, you put all this money into a box and it can just take ages to clear customs. It could be put on a fucking lorry. I had that the other week. Um, and left in the cold or something like that. It, so many things can go wrong. But you don't have the same... I don't say rights, but it just doesn't work the same as what it would if you were a customer. So a lot of people go in thinking it's glam, you know, and get all these big, beautiful boxes of plants and they're all going to come out of the box like this and it's going to be great. And that's how you get flipping because people think that you get, you get flipping. Sorry, this is like a total segue. You get flipping for two different reasons. So I'm just checking how long that's been recording so I don't actually run out of recording again. You get flipping for two reasons, in my opinion. You get those that flip and they don't know any better. They don't know that AJ, these plants are going to decline. Um, and they sell something on because it comes through the door, you know, looking like this and it looks beautiful and they think, well, it's good to go. I don't, you know, the roots look good. We've got some root. We're fine. Uh, PSA, this has more rot. It don't look good. 
<laughs> you get my point. And then you have the other type of flipper that knows this shit happens and they sell it because they know that things tank. You get so many problems off the back of um, just, just not generally knowing the, the system, the game, I guess you could say of how it works. Um, and that really ties into it. But a lot of it for me is like getting in, oh, just super expensive plants. Like it's not so bad once you've spent however much on a, a crystallinum that's obviously a much lower price than, I don't know, Spiritus Sancti, say, buying that in, right? <laughs> a bit different, right? One of these rots, ah, oh, shit, all right. I wouldn't think about it past 10 seconds after seeing a plant that had completely rotted and it was done. Spiritus Sancti, I'm probably going to, you know, it's going to have a lasting effect. Um, shit like that is what you don't see or shops that say you're starting up and I don't, um, people know my opinions on this. I don't think you should start up this way, but you've started up and you've, you've thrown everything into the one order and it comes and you're expecting it to go out, not, not flipping it even, but just you're expecting the order to go out within a month or two and you've pre-sold the plants. You've done a pre-sale and then it all dies on you and you're like, ah, oh, shit, that's famously happened. Um, to a lot of shops. Um, that sucks. But all of this is based off the expectation versus reality of a plant shop, and it's because it's not shown. Now, I like to show as much as I can of my shop. Um, obviously, there are limits, and <laughs> the main reason that I have limits is obviously the whole trade secret thing. Um, and I, I don't care anymore, guys, the amount of hate I get for saying it. It's, I know a lot of you know that that's just a logical thing. If you're in an industry and you have a way of doing something that you've developed that puts you at an edge over your competitors, you're not going to fucking dish it out. You're not going to tell anyone what it is. I have, in my opinion, perfected um, certain, for example, with this, certain temperature, method of importing, how long to leave them for, anything, light levels, you name it, I've perfected a way of getting my imports to look this good when they're brought in. Some of that is on my supplier and how good they are. A lot of it is on this end because if I put this in my living room, this shit ain't going to look like this. Do you know what I mean? I tweak the levels in here to try and get a good concoction to make sure these import smoothly and I have minimal loss. I will still grow them on for stupid amounts of time. Um, I don't sell my plants enough, to be honest. Let's be honest. I don't. I need to sell them more often because now I've got a problem where I'm overcrowded. As you can maybe see, I don't know, in the back of this shop. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to tell people what that is. So although I like to tell people about owning a shop and the pitfalls, and I do like to give as much as I can. I am at a limit of, of what I can give you. Some of that is to protect the brand. Um, and some of it is obviously well, to protect the brand, to protect the business itself, like trade secrets and stuff like that. And again, it's not fucking gatekeeping. Less said about that, the better. You know, you know my opinion. Um, but uh, this is getting really waffly. All I mean is this expectations versus reality thing, a lot of it comes from just people not being transparent enough, but not necessarily through any fault of their own. Like, I understand why you know, if you do a tour of your plant shop or you or a YouTuber or whatever you're doing, even for you yourself at home doing a, a video for Instagram or a photo for Instagram, you're going to move shit out of the way. It, it's human nature. We do it. It happens. Um, don't feel bad about it. It's, it's how we live. It's the internet is supposed to be this big, beautiful, untouchable, cosmopolitan, glamorous thing. And it, it's not, but you can't help but play into it. And it's a shame. Because obviously, the more people that didn't, the better. But in the scheme of the internet, it's never realistically going to happen, is it? Um, so I guess you just got to try and make the ripples that you can, um, showing off less than perfect stuff and whatever have you. But yeah, basically, I've, I've rambled too long on that. And it, it's gone off topic a little bit. But yeah, the expectation versus reality on a plant shop is this shit ain't glamorous. The, like, you might think this looks fun because you might not often do this on this scale. But if you do it every day, trust me, it's a fucking nightmare. Like, I'd rather be anywhere but doing this. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to do something else. I'm, I'm sick of doing this. Why does it smell so bad? Oh, God, that smells bad. Sorry, I was talking there, and I was like, oh, shit, what is that? It's got to be rot. Should we have a look? Boy, that smells worse than all of them. Why? I've got new roots, though. You probably can't see. I've got two little antennas there on the top where I've grown my own. What have we got in here? Fuck all. Oh, my good Lord. Hang on, guys. I think I was done with that question anyway, but seriously, 
Seriously, check this out. Oh my good lord. My good lord. Let me just get a little bit more. Of the yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. That's, yep. Yep. That's rot. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, smelly boy. Um, if you want to know, by the way, because I don't know if a few people are going to be like, oh, how do you deal with the rot? Um, I, I think, I feel like a lot of people missed this video. Um, basically, <laughs> You guys asked me for a long time to do a video on root rot, how to identify it, how to guess at like above soil level, below soil level, how to deal with it, how to prevent it from happening in the future, etc, etc, etc. I do have a full video on that. I will link it for you down below. If I haven't, it means I've forgotten after I've edited this and I haven't put it in the description. So please pester me if I haven't. Um, but I have a whole video on how to remove rot and how to deal with it. So if that's something that interests you, um, look at the description below and it will be there and I will try and link it on the end of this one Because th there is there is ways there is ways to save your shit Like I'm not worried about this plant. This plant's gonna be absolutely fine. Even though we've lost most of the root system I'm not even 1% worried even though that's yellowing and it's not it's not doing well um, I ain't worried. That's fine. We're not gonna have any problems with that um, just from experience So if you want uh, to watch that video just look down below and it will be there. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that there for today because I've done, I've done a few. Um, oh, oh, I've just, oh, well, probably rot. Am I right? Am I right? Um, I've done a few, but I'm gonna leave that as it is because there is a lot here. And literally guys, this is the level of what I'm talking about with how long they've been in here. They've been in here too long. This is very uncharacteristic of what I would do, um, but they seemed stable. So I, I kind of left them like this. Um, I don't do that with every plant. I've got different methods for different things, but oh, that's very long, that. I like that. I think I've been doing Magnificum, by the way. I should have said that. I think all of these that I've been picking up are Magnificum. There are crystalline into the front. Uh, yes, I think it's just mags and crystals in here, and they're growing like wildfire, so I need to do something about that. But that was it for this week's repot. I hope you liked it. The, the topics were maybe a bit different from usual, um, but I kind of enjoyed it. I'm trying to get these gloves off. Please, thank you, thank you. Let me know what you think about anything I've said. As always, I do do these repots every so often and I usually take questions on Instagram for these repots. So if you don't really watch these or if you've never really watched these before, I a few days before I film these videos, I put on my Instagram stories, I will show you my Instagram now, um, I put on a little question box and I just say, oh, I'm gonna film a repot with me. What would you like me to talk about? And generally there's nothing off limits in these repot with me's it can be anything you like it doesn't have to be plant related you can ask me personal questions i either will or won't answer them it's okay um anything you want you can ask me it does not have to just be about plants so it can be on a controversial topic because i seem to get those a lot um it could be on anything you want so if that's something that interests you then please keep an eye out on my instagram for such things because i do definitely 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 ask i've never done a repot with me where i haven't asked questions um on what to talk about and I like doing that because I feel like you guys shape the content and it's a really nice window into what you guys are thinking and feeling and how you are and, and everything really. So I really enjoy it. So anyway, I'm going to go grab a drink because my throat is very dry and I will see you, well, I'll see you next week. I've got some stuff planned for you. I will be on holiday uh, a few days after this. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I need to go and pack. So I will be doing that. Thank you very much for watching and no doubt I will see you in spirit next week. Thank you very much, guys. Bye.